as my little yarn of ores. Fiber Spider back again to continue with our crochet along. Now, as you can see from my mediocre camera work, um, <laughs> I have the four triangles done, um, if you've been following along with me. And so that means that we are ready to do the next two rounds, which are going to go across and around the entire perimeter of our square. Now, yes, I've done this before in previous videos, but to be truly faithful to you guys, I thought that it would do the sense of the crochet along fair justice to do it right and to do it thoroughly. So here we are. And so it's part crochet along, part stitch and twitch, because I got my coffee on hand. And let's get started. All right, so I'm going to use my fabulous blue-green yarn. And starting in the corner, just as before. <clears throat> and so we're pulling up a loop in the corner, going to chain up three. And then two more double crochets to finish the first cluster. Like so. Two chains. And then three more doubles to finish this corner. And then we will be able to do quite a bit of a straight away, so you can listen to me ramble. <laughs> All right, so we're going to adjust ourselves here. All right, so hope you guys have all been doing really well. I've been running around like a chicken that's been recently acquainted with a farmer's hatchet, um, <laughs> without a head, I mean. Um, so we're chaining one. And we do a cluster into the next space, and we're going to be doing that all the way across until we reach the middle, and I'll show you what we do then. It's nothing new. We've done this before, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with a little bit of a refresher. Yeah, I've been working on so many things all at the same time, of course, but that's not news. That's old school, isn't it? That's okay. Yeah, I, I lead a pretty uh, repetitious and uh, routine lifestyle. I go to work, I come home, I do some stitching. I go to work, I come home, I do some stitching. And the funny thing is, is that yes, I have a job, but I don't really... I don't know. I really don't necessarily consider that to be my quote-unquote work. Because um, this, this is, you know, what I'm doing right now. This is my passion. And I always say that if you do what you love, you're a very rich man. Well, then, I hate. I'm not only that, but I'm blessed. Because not only... Am I doing what I love? But also I get to share it with all you guys. So it is a win-win. And as an extra special bonus, I have... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I have received quite a number of photo entries, so to speak, from my Facebook page, because in the last video I said, hey, you guys deserve to be recognized too for what you're doing. And some of you were gracious enough to send me some photos of your finished pieces, your works in progress. And so at the end of this video, we're gonna share, we're gonna showcase. And I think that that is only just, because without you guys, this channel wouldn't be what it is. 
So I think that you guys deserve Here we are. <laughs> you guys deserve to be recognized as well. All right, so we're at the center point once again. So I chained one already. And now we have to go through both layers, just as we've done previously. So making sure that our purple yarn, in this case, is a little bit taut. We go underneath the yellow, making sure that the yellow and the purple are underneath the hook. Well, that the hook is underneath <laughs> both the purple and the yellow. And we do our cluster, just as we always have been. Now, I can make this a little bit tighter, and I think that I will. There we go. Yes, yeah, going underneath both layers. Ta-da! And we finish the cluster. like so. Yes, we have a connection. All right. So now we just continue along this side, going along our merry way, just as before, until we reach the center of the next side. And then we'll do it again. So yeah, like I was saying, you guys deserve recognition too. And so I'm going to do a little slideshow showcase say that five times fast slideshow showcase slideshow showcase <laughs> and so i'm going to do that at the end of this video so please um you know don't skip to the end just yet you know because i'm not skipping i'm right here with you guys and also like i said i hope you're all doing well Now, right now, having some interesting early summer weather here. The day started off beautiful, and then the sky opened up and said, hello. And now the, the, the flowers are getting a nice drink. And my mother's rose bushes, I'm sure, are very happy about that. And if the rose bushes are doing well, I'm sure that the local deer are even happier because they love a good smorgasbord. Much to my mother's chagrin. All right, so we're almost to the end of this side. I tell you, I'm absolutely loving how this is turning out. And... Uh, now, aside from this, I'm also working on, as I've said, some other projects, and some of them are specifically for future tutorials, and some of them, well, I'm working on a couple of knitted scarves, actually, and I'm thinking that, well, there are very, very basic as far as their stitching. It's just uh, the the garter stitch. So stitch-wise, they're very, very simple. It still takes a long time. You know, knitting always does take a lot longer than crocheting. But I was thinking that it might be nice that uh, when my local library does another collection this upcoming winter, uh, they last winter they collected hats and scarves and blankets for those in need. I said, "Hey, let me do my part." All right, so we've reached the corner, <clears throat> and this is—I know this is old hat to some of you by now. I know, I know, but I like to do it anyway. So we've reached the corner. I chain two and doing our second cluster in that corner. So yeah, so they uh, they were doing a collection and I donated a bunch of stuff and you know, they were so very, very, very kind and gracious. 
and uh, appreciative, and that really, it made it all worthwhile. It really did. Um, because quite frankly, I had tons of stuff, and prior to me finding out that they were doing a drive, well, I was doing a craft fair, and I had attended the same fair the year before, and I did really well. This year, well, this, sorry, not this year, but this past fair that I did, didn't do quite so well. And I had lots and lots of leftovers, and I said to myself, Self, do you want to hang on to this stuff indefinitely, or do you want to do some good? So I decided, well, I can make some space, and I can move on to other projects and do new things, and I can help somebody out at the same time. So ultimately, it was a win-win. You know, craft fairs, I don't know if any of you have had any experience with doing craft fairs, but it really is a hit or miss, I'm afraid. Really depends on so many factors, most of which are beyond one's control. Um, it really is, pardon the expression, a crapshoot. Um, And also they had raised the price of the space that everybody gets. You know, it's like you have to bring your own table, and they raised the, the price of admission, which I thought was mm, probably necessary for them, but I just didn't think it was very nice. That and also... Even though it was a craft fair, there were a lot of vendors that were selling pre-made items, things that you would find in a, a flea market or something like that. Um, and I just, I don't know, I, I just didn't think that it was appropriate because either it's a crafts, you know, an arts and crafts fair or it's a flea market. But to have such a hodgepodge sort of sullied it a little bit, I think. So, anywho. I think it all turned out for the best, though. We live, we learn. All right, I need myself a sip of coffee. Excuse me a moment. Okay, so now we are at the intersection where we're going through both layers once again, so I chained one already. And then we have to go underneath both layers, making sure that the purple is a little bit taut. There we go. And shaboom. All right. Yeah, so truth be told, I don't think that I'm going to be doing another craft fair anytime soon. Um, I mean, aside from the last time being rather disenchanting, um, I don't know, I was thinking about perhaps at some point maybe opening up a store on Etsy or Shopify or what have you. I don't, I don't know. I haven't tried it before, and I was thinking that it might be a nice way of, you know, perhaps making a little bit of extra money as well as cleaning out my inventory because I have a lot of stuff. You know, if, you, if you've been following my previous videos, I had done a vlog entry about my yarn hoard. I hate that word, but yes, it is a yarn hoard. Um, and, uh, well, I have, to go along with that yarn hoard, bins filled with works in progress, as well as bins filled with actual finished projects. And, um, you know, that's the thing. When I was donating to the to the library, um, you know, part of my motive was to get myself some more space so that I could continue doing my work. Um, you know, thank God I have a garage. Oof. Without that, forget it. <laughs> so... 
Yeah, and the thing that really got me about that fair, I'm not trying to sound all whiny and everything, but I had hats and scarves and blankets and things, and the hats and scarves, I had this big sign. Now keep in mind, all of the items were knitted as well as crocheted, um, most of which admittedly were done with acrylic yarn, but that's for the ease of uh, caring for the items, um, also because I could keep costs down. And I was selling these hats and scarves for $10 each, <clears throat> literally. It was a big sign that said, hats and scarves, two for 20. And even that didn't help. And I honestly, in good conscience, I, I could not go any lower than that. Um, and people were trying to haggle me down and it was, it was a little demoralizing. Um, but, um, no, it, it's also a, a learning experience. It really is. You know, and so that's why I was thinking, hmm, maybe, you know, go about it in a different fashion and try an online store kind of situation. You know, never, never done it before, but I was thinking, eh, maybe, you know, could try it, you know, perhaps closer to the, um, closer to the fall, maybe. All right, so we're in the corner, so we're, we did our chain two, and then another cluster in that same corner space. Um, I don't know, I was thinking about it. You know, I think one of my big hang-ups is trying to figure out shipping, and I know that that perhaps seems silly, but I don't know. So at any rate, that's sort of what's going on with me right now. And as always, I love hearing from you guys, most assuredly. You know, and since starting this whole fiber spider experience, um, having my own little web on the web, <laughs> so to speak, um, you know, I, I love talking with you guys, and I've been chit-chatting with you know, a number of you on, uh, well, through my Instagram account, as well as through my Facebook community page, through Messenger and so forth. And I, I love talking to you guys. And, um, it's, it's nice to know that, um, you know, you can talk to somebody who knows exactly what, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some more yarn here. Um, it's nice to know that you can talk to somebody out there who understands, you know, what you're going through as well as understand, you know, like, you know, we're, we're yarn people, you know, we're, we're stitchers. Our minds work in uh, a slightly different way. Um, you know, some people, they look at what we do and, you know, they look at our stitching and they're like, oh my god, I could never do that. It would drive me crazy. Well, the irony is that if I don't do this, then I go crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, and I try to tell them, it's like, well, actually, you can do this. It's just a matter of, you know, are you willing to put in the time and the effort and the patience and have humility enough to undo some work if it, you know, didn't come out right, you know, and then learn from your mistakes. You know, any, anybody can really do this. You know, this isn't something like being double jointed where it's like, you know, either you are or you aren't. No, really anybody can do this. It's just a matter of, you know, putting in the work. You know, so, <clears throat> you know, and I don't know if I mentioned this anecdote once before, I might have in a, a comment, but um, I was doing a, an open house once, and I was sitting there at a table, and I was demonstrating crocheting for classes that were to be held, and I, I was the instructor at the time. Um, 
Oh, we're almost to our, oops, almost to our connecting bit on this side. And chain one. All right, so yes, we're, we are where we need to be. All right, so make sure that the purple is a little bit taut. Go underneath both layers, like so, and do our cluster. There we are. Yeah, so I, I was doing a sort of demonstration um, at an open house. And, uh, you know, it was at the the front of a, uh, a store and um, you know all these customers were passing through and there was this one woman who she saw me and she did a double take and she looked at me you know with a, a very you know puzzled expression on her face and you know I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm stitching away and um, you know, working on some project, I can't remember what. And she looked at me and she said, you know, oh, that's very nice. And I, you know, I said, thank you. And she's like, um, so you, you did all these things. And I said, yes. And she's like, um, but you're a guy. And I said, <laughs> well, I wanted to say, oh, you noticed. Um, and I, I said, you know, with a straight face, I said, yes. Um, and she just, it, it's almost like it, it's something that could not dawn on her. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is something that I do, you know, and I try to say, you know, it's like, yeah, anybody can do it. Um, you know, why, why shouldn't I, you know? You know, children, men, women, I'm sure that even chimpanzees and gorillas could do it, you know, if they were, if they were taught. I don't think any of them are watching this channel, but hey. <laughs> well, you never know. These days, you never know. All right, so we're almost to the end of this side. Do, 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 do. You know, I mean, in you know, throughout history, you know, knitting as well as crocheting, um, you know, men have been affiliated with it, and also, it's been used for not just you know warmth either. Um, you know, I'm sure I've mentioned that, you know, it's like, yeah, no, I, I don't have a tremendous social life and um, so forth. So, yeah, I, I spend a lot of time on the Internet researching various things. Um, you know, way, way, way back in the day, men used to knit their own waistcoats with very, very fine needles and very fine thread. I'm, I'm thinking it must have been um, fingering weight yarn, actually. And, you know, you could also um, see pictures and examples of very early fishing nets that were crocheted, you know, very large hooks and fine line. And yes, boom, fishing nets. All right, so we've reached the end of our edge here. So we chain two, and then we do another cluster of three into, oops, into the same space. And we're so close to being done with this round. Fabulous. Gotta love it, right? <laughs> so now we're just gonna continue working our way along this last side. It is, yes, it's the last side of the perimeter. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, also, I have come across some really fascinating stuff, especially regarding knitting, which, technically speaking, the same thing could be done with 
crocheting as well, but in this case, I did see an article recently about how knitters were used as spies during World War II. Now, I don't know the absolute validity of this, um, but I, just the idea, I think, is fascinating how there were women who would actually be sitting there knitting and they would slightly alter their pattern in code. So they would do a stitch and then they, then when, uh, say a, a train passed by, um, they would slightly alter their stitch, you know, and they would record this information almost like a form of stenography. Um, and they would, you know, take this encrypted form of stitching and use it with the, the war effort. Now, also, I do not condone warfare in any sense of the word. However, as far as using stitching as a means of communication, that is what fascinates me. That is what intrigued me. And also, very similar to that, I did see on YouTube a documentary slash lecture on a woman who was doing these really, really intricate pieces of knitting using the knit and purl stitch, which in the crocheting lingo, it, it would almost be like the equivalent to a front post or back post double crochet. You know, you have a, you either have a bump or you don't have a bump, you know. And so, you know, you know, bump, no bump, bump, no bump. And this particular woman was actually translating, I, I believe she was translating, um, I want to say it was, you know, little bits of literature or poetry or what have you. I don't remember the exact bits. I'm sorry. But she was translating it into stitching as Morse code. Oh my god. How cool is that? All right, so we've reached this edge, the last edge that we have to deal with. Make sure the purple is taut. Do a double underneath both layers. Oops. And so this particular person had her works hanging up and there was a gentleman who was walking around and saw this. I think it was in a gallery. Um, and he could actually read it by sight. And the, th the funny thing is, is that the husband, he could read it. And the woman, you know, she could identify the stitches. But the man, he could actually read it for what it was um, and translate the Morse code. Absolutely fascinating, you know. And that, that to me is definitely food for thought. You know, the idea that a craft form can also be used in quite literally a literary fashion. Um, Mind-boggling, you know. I mean, I'm sure that many of you have seen, <clears throat> you know, uh, examples of intarsia or fair isle or uh, tapestry work where stitching is utilized to um, present representations of pictures and patterns and so forth, um, but to actually represent words, you know, many, many, many words, not just a, uh, a garden variety sampler in counted cross stitch. No, no, no. You know, I mean, th this, to me, it's mind blowing. I love it, but it's mind blowing. You know, and then of course you have other mediums like the the the, uh, the quilts that were used during the Underground Railroad, and how they were apparently used as signs and symbols to help with the Underground Railroad movement. Again, 
you know, I think it's absolutely fascinating. You know, crafting makes a difference, you know? I mean, it's... The fact that it can keep somebody warm, that alone is worthy in my book. But the fact that it can actually help people in a multitude of ways, think about that. You know, that's pretty special, too. All right, so we're almost to the end of this round, and then we've got one more. Can you just sense the anticipation through your screen? Can you can you sense it? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I'm not quite as loopy as I was during my last video. I mean, I'm always a little bit uh, off kilter, but, you know, I did get more sleep last night than I did on that previous video. That previous one, I think I was up for about 24 hours total that day. That was interesting. All right, so... Now what we need to do is do a slip stitch into the top chain here, and we're almost there. Yes siree. Alright. So we do our slip stitch. Okay. Then, as we have done before, we do a slip stitch into the next, into the top of the next double crochet slip stitch, then another slip stitch, and then a slip stitch into this space here. All right, and then we need to do one more round and as the expression goes, for stuff and giggles, we're going to do it together. So you chain up three, and finish off the cluster by doing two more doubles. There we are. Chain two. <coughs> and then three doubles. And then we're just going to continue stitching our way along this edge, just as we have before. And we will continue to kibitz a little bit. And if you are still watching, I applaud you. <laughs> I do. I applaud you because, you know, either I'm amusing or you guys are really bored or, I hey, I don't know. <laughs> um... I mean, some of you have said that uh, you like my banter um, and my, my chit-chat. Um, if you do, great. You know, I'm, I'm delighted. Um, you know, I'm not about to toot my own horn and be like, oh, yes, I'm just so interesting. No, I'm, I'm just me. Um, you know, for better or for worse, I am just me. Some people dig it, some people, they would rather, rather not, but if you're still here, hey, glad to have you here. <laughs> My yarn's all squeaky. Or maybe you could say my hook is all squeaky. It's a bit humid. All right, so we're just going to keep working our way across, and because we did our previous round, we don't have to worry about connecting anything. You know, we can just sort of free wheel all the way around the entire perimeter, and 
not have to worry about anything. And that is why this is such a great pattern for being mindful, not having to worry about following a very specific rigid pattern with 23 repeats and this and that and the other. No, just, just go for it. Just have some fun. Seems to be there's a shortage of that these days. So let's replenish it. Hmm? <laughs> All right, so we're just going to keep going along. Do, do, do. Also, I was at the, the store today and I was picking up, yes, some more yarn. I need more yarn like I need, well, a hole in the head. Um, and it's because I'm working on yet another project. Yeah, like I didn't have enough of those already, right? Hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, working on yet another project. It's another blanket project um, in the granny style. However, it is, mm, it, it's quite elaborate. Um, and uh, I think it might be fun. I don't know about doing it as a crochet along per se, but it definitely warrants being a uh, small series, uh, you know, part one, two, what have you. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm working on that. We'll see. You know, I always have multiple whips going on. Keeps things interesting. <clears throat> All right, see, now we have reached the middle of this row, well, this edge of this row. All right, and see, as before, you know, the center space was here, we filled it, and now we're creating a new one. And that's why you need to do two rounds, or a multiple of two rounds, so that you can come up with this new center space. Because when we do our next set of triangles, it's going to be, here's the center space, so then you have to go over to the third here. You know, and then build your triangles um, off of this side. But we'll get there. You know. Oof, my goodness.